Welcome to the Virtual Lab series, where I walk you through some protocols, experiments, and concepts that we use in the lab. In this experiment, we will be analyzing secreted factors from perivascular adipose tissue using an ELISA, which stands for Enzyme-Linked Immunosorbent Assay. An ELISA is used to quantify peptides and proteins of interest within a liquid sample solution. When working with cell cultures, this is a great way to quantify cell secretion of a specific compound. In the clinic, an ELISA can be used to detect infectious agents, antibodies, and hormones. For our purposes, we will be using the ELISA to quantify cytokine secretion. There are a few types of ELISA, but they all work in the same fundamental way in that an antibody-antigen complex is formed and then quantified. In our case, we will be using the sandwich ELISA. So let's begin. In a previous experiment, we extracted perivascular adipose tissue from a mouse. In this study, we're interested in quantifying the factors secreted by this tissue. We can look at a number of variables, such as time or dose responses. For example, we can run a time course study where we determine when secretion of cytokines is the highest. We can also run a dose response study in which we load the media with a factor, such as TNF-alpha, and determine the dose of TNF-alpha that elicits the highest response. We can also do both and determine the best time point and then run a dose response study. This way, we can optimize the experimental parameters to get as robust of a response as possible. To start off, we first prepare a 96 well plate with the appropriate media. The media is currently unconditioned. If this is a dose response study, we will go ahead and load the appropriate dose in each well. Once the plate of media is ready, we can go ahead and cut the PVAT into equivalent parts. Each piece is weighed and then divided. This way we can make sure that each experimental group receives an equivalent mass of PVAT. We can then take the PVAT tissue and place it into the media. We incubate it for a specified amount of time. For example, in a time course study, the media is collected at 8 hours, 16 hours, 24 hours, and 48 hours. We can then analyze the media via ELISA, and this will allow us to determine the optimal time point to use in future studies. In a dose response study, the PVAT can be incubated in treated media and then collected at the optimal time point previously determined, after which it is analyzed via ELISA. Once all the media has been collected, an aliquot of sample will be loaded into an ELISA plate. This plate contains antibodies which will bind to the specific ligand of interest. We can also add in standards with the known concentration of ligand so that we can generate a standard curve later. We allow this to incubate for 2.5 hours at room temperature. During this step, the antibodies on the plate will bind to the antigens of interest. Any ligands that are not bound because they don't contain the antigen of interest can then simply be washed away. We do this by loading the plate with washing buffer and then aspirating or decanting the solution. After washing, a biotinylated antibody is added. This also binds to the antigen in our ligand, but at a different epitope, or binding site, sandwiching the ligand of interest between two antibodies. Once again, any unbound factors are washed away to prevent non-specific binding. For the next step, streptavidin enzyme is added onto the plate. This enzyme binds to the biotin of that second antibody. We now have a complex that includes two antibodies, both bound to the antigen, the second antibody has conjugated biotin, which is then bound to streptavidin. Notice that the amount of streptavidin must be proportional to the amount of bound ligand. We then add a substrate that reacts with the streptavidin complex to produce color. This substrate will only react with the streptavidin, meaning that the amount of color that is generated is proportional to the amount of ligand in our solution. After letting it incubate for 30 minutes, a stop solution is then added to each well to halt the colorometric reaction. The plate is immediately quantified with the plate reader. We can then create a standard curve by taking the standards with the known concentration of ligand and their colorimetric values. This allows us to then generate a line that fits the data. We can quantify the amount of ligand in our samples by taking the measured colorimetric value and calculating the ligand concentration. In the end, we now have data that tells us at which time point cytokine secretion is the highest. We now also have data that tells us which dose elicits the highest amount of cytokine secretion. Well, there you have it, a basic introduction to the concept of a sandwich ELISA. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below. Thanks for tuning in, and be sure to hit the subscribe button 